If they're looting jewelry and everything from everyone and it's full of precious gems, it's a lot of work to separate everything and then melt it down and then pack that out instead of just chucking it in a box and packing it all out. Mm -hmm. I, I also think that um, if soldiers are looting things, <laughs> they're probably going to keep that stuff. Yeah. A fair amount of it, maybe not all a of portion it, of right? It, yeah. They're but gonna they're gonna keep a cut. I think that uh, supposedly this whole thing was was organized from the highest levels, and so it, yeah. and so it was like they did a fairly decent job supposedly. But again, but, it's, you know, Steve's point is is totally right. You you just have jewelry, right? If you have jewelry, you just toss it in a box or mm -hmm. you know whatever, and it's it's even it's harder to trace at that point. I mean. Yeah. You know, the number of super unique pieces of jewelry out there is because uh, yeah. you don't you don't want to you don't want to spend the time and effort it takes to for your people who you are employing yeah. to sit down and separate all of this. I mean, the Germans did this when they looted everybody, but they used slave labor to do that separation process. The Japanese didn't have a whole huge swath of that available, so that's a lot of effort on their part. Well, also, it just doesn't make, I mean, it just doesn't make sense. No. That you would do that in the middle of a war. You, you yeah, well, and especially yeah. when you're in these small areas. Yeah, yeah they did, and they would, have, they would have probably, actually, not all of it would have been melted down into gold bars, but they they would have come across gold bars in banks and places yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, I just I can't know. see them shipping it to the Philippines. It makes yeah. no sense. No, I agree. Yeah. All right. Sorry, everybody. I guess it doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's about it for this week. Unless you guys have anything more you want to say about mm. Yamashita's gold. No. Yeah. Mm. All right. Well, if you guys, if you have any thoughts about it out there, listener person, uh, you can call. You can, Listener can, person? Yeah, I, can, no, I like that designation. Yeah, they are now yeah. not listeners. They are listener person. That's right. If you want to find a place to download our episodes, because obviously since you're listening, you obviously don't have a clue how to download our episodes, but you can find <laughs> it. You find every episode on our, our website, which is thinkingsidewayspodcast.com. You can leave comments. You can check our links, because we have links to a lot of these mysteries. And, of course, you can listen to episodes. Uh, you can also find us on iTunes. You can subscribe, and hopefully you will also leave us a review. Even more, hopefully, it'll be a good review. That'd be nice. <laughs> uh, you can also stream us uh, from pretty much anywhere. There's billions and billions of apps for that, right? Yes. Billions. Yeah. That is yeah. a real number. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you'll also find us on Facebook. Uh, you can like us and follow us. Yes, please like us. Please. <laughs> And, uh, of course, we're on Twitter. We're a little different on Twitter. We're thinking sideways. We we're cooler. Yeah, yeah, we're cooler. Yeah. And to be hip. Last of all, if you want to if you want to send us a message at all, you can email us at thinkingsidewayspodcast at gmail.com. We also uh, are launching a new project this week. We are. Um, we are officially on a site called Patreon. Um, if you go to patreon.com slash thinking sideways, you can pledge to donate a dollar amount per episode that we release. That is, it's kind of like we're doing a, the OPB membership drive. Yeah, we're, we're doing NPR a fundraiser drive. drive yeah. um, but this one will never end. It will never, <laughs> ever end. Um, but there are some pretty cool incentives if you donate, you know, more than X number of and dollars per episode. And there's a video that explains everything on there. Um, it's a video of us. It is a video of us. So go ahead and go over there if you think that might be something that you'd be into. Yeah. I mean, we give that, kind of break it down at Patreon. On, on their site as well. Yep. Gives all the good particulars of how it operates and how it sets well, up. So yep. it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. Though. Yeah. yeah. So there's, that's voluntary, of course. Oh yeah. Yeah. Of course. yeah. 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 So check that out, um, or there will be a wink, link on our website. Not a wink. Also a wink. <laughs> I'll put a wink. Yeah. yeah there's a wink. They're Perfect. all winks. <laughs> we have lots uh, and lots of winks on yeah, the website. We, we wink to all our websites. <laughs> 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 okay, guys. I think we're going to get out Yeah, of we should probably call this one done. Yeah. All right. See you next week, folks. Later, guys. Bye, guys. Thinking sideways. I don't understand. Does not compute. You never know. Stories of things we simply don't know the answer to. Hello there.
Welcome to Thinking Sideways, the hard-hitting podcast that finds out stuff that nobody else can figure out. I'm Joe, joined by... Oh, Devin. Steve. Sorry, we went the opposite way. Yeah, yeah, we got to mix it up sometimes. Ah. Yeah, we don't want people to think there's some particular order. I also realized that I literally cannot do the intros. <laughs> Every single episode we have from the last like month and a half, I'm just like, Devin, I don't know what we're doing anymore. Who, who are we talking What's to? What's going on? Where am I? What's the name of our podcast? I don't know. Yeah. This week, we're solving yet another mystery. And this is a fairly well-known one, but not as well-known as some of the really well-known ones. I didn't you know, know like, about it. You didn't know about no. it? No. Did you know about it? Uh, no. No. Yeah. No. See? I, I, I had no idea how I found out about it, to tell you the it's truth. German. I you I, know everything German. Yeah, I don't remember. But uh, anyway, so somehow we got wind of this, and it's kind of mysterious, and so we thought we'd solve it. Just so, you know, uh, all the next of kin can, like, move on with their lives. <laughs> so, yeah. And so, yes, this does unfortunately involve somebody's di- somebody dying. A lot of our mysteries seem to involve people dying. Have you noticed that? Yeah. I yeah. have. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is why I'm, I'm going to non-death stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For a while. That's right. You're going to positive, uplifting, you know, kind yes. of fuzzy, warm. Kittens and bunnies. Yeah. So that's, you, you know, you go with that. I'm going to stick with death. So uh, this is a this is a case that's called Yagsi Fall. And let me spell that out. Y-O-G apostrophe T-Z-E. Yagsi! Yagsi, exactly. I know. <laughs> it kind of reminds you of that. Yeah. So anyway, this happened back in 1984 in Germany. Uh, there's a guy named Gunther Stoll. Who had a case of paranoia. A big old case of paranoia. Yeah, kind of. So uh, prior to his death, he would speak to his wife about them. And he talked about them, meaning people who tended to kill him. Uh, oh, and, that them. Yeah, that them. He never said who exactly they were, but yeah, there were apparently people out to get him. And what, okay, and what was his profession again? Uh, he worked in the food industry. He was like a food technician or and some sort of technician. Was he working at the time of his No, he was unemployed at the time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, probably, you know, and actually, seriously, if there are people out to get you, do you want to be working in any sort of factory where they could shove you into the machinery? No. Yeah, I know, seriously. Definitely Burger. Not. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm better to get a job at a 7-Eleven, like the night, the graveyard shift. Yeah. It's a lot safer. Soylent Green is Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, uh, I, and I, I'm not sure. Nobody's ever actually interviewed his wife to find out how exactly hard it was to live with this guy. You know, he's always raving on about them. But maybe there really were people out to get him because actually in the end he did die. So kind of mysteriously, right? Yeah, kind of a little bit mysteriously. Yeah. On October twenty fifth, nineteen eighty four, around eleven p.m., he was at home with his wife, and he mentioned them again, and then suddenly shouts, "Jetzt geht mir ein Licht auf." Well, means, yes. Oh, of course. Yes, yeah. Which means now I've got it in German, of course. So and then he writes down six letters on a piece of paper, and the letters are again Y O G. Apostrophe T Z E, Yagsi, and also it's, it's noted that the the third letter, the G, could also be a six. So there's a little bit of ambiguity. So there. he's got a little bit of sloppy handwriting. Yeah, I'm guessing. yeah, yeah. So, so, so they think that the connection could be the the uh, horizontal bar on the G could have been meant to connect to yeah. to make a six instead of just floating there. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. It was uh, a little weird when I read that at first. I was just trying to make sure. Some I, people make their G's kind of the same way they make their. They're sixes. They just, like, do a little down thing. Because I'm guessing he wrote this all in capitals. Uh, yeah, apparently. Because that's the only way the G would become a six, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is if it was a capital G. But, you know, somebody makes a G, a six like this, or they make a G like that. Mm-hmm. Right? I know that our listeners can't what, what see Devin, what I'm What Devin doing. is drawing is you start at the top, you draw to the left and down in an arc, and then you come up to the mid Which on is the, the only way right. I've ever seen so anybody write a So you've made kind six. of a J uh-huh. shape, yeah. and then you're saying they go... To the left a little, back to the right, and then down. Uh huh. So some people do horizontal bar. Those kind of G's or like a six. Mm. Yeah. It could be. Yeah. So anyway, who knows? Probably a license plate number. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It does kind of look like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, so it's it's nobody knows what it means. Uh, apparently, right after he wrote them down, he crossed them out. So he didn't have it. Or he did, but he wanted to make sure that nobody else could have it. So they wouldn't know. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure. He might have been working on some sort of word puzzle, too. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe. So, yog I don't know. Uh, so nobody's ever been able to decipher the, the meaning of these particular words. Uh, so anyway, right after that, he left the house and went to a pub in Wilnsdorf. Apparently, it was his favorite drinking hole. And he uh, ordered a beer, and then he fell off his bar stool backwards and, and hit his head. 
Uh, according to witnesses there, he lost consciousness briefly, and they also said that he wasn't drunk. Well, that was apparently his first beer of the night. That apparently he didn't get to drink because he left right after that too. And and he was he was unconscious for a couple of moments. Yeah, yeah, he lost consciousness apparently. So, and then they let him get in his car and drive away. Yeah, I know. Okay. Wait, yeah. well, yeah. I'm I'm just trying to I'm just trying to to place this in my head, and I've seen people fall off chairs or fall off stools before. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to think, well, did he did he just pitch backwards and fall flat to the floor, or did he hit a table or a chair on his way down? We don't mm-hmm. know that, I'm yeah, guessing. The, the accounts are sketchy, yeah. I mean, he could have he could have fallen backwards. It was a bar full of people drinking. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he could have fallen straight over backwards or sort of to the sides and smacked his face or hit against a table or God knows what. But well, I was just all. thinking that falling flat, you're not going to hit your head as hard. As if you hit a table or chair on the way down. If you think yeah. about it, your body takes the inertia and then your head bounces off the ground. If yeah. You fall flat. But if you fall and hit something on the way down, all that inertia is at that contact point. Oh, unless, yeah. Unless, oh, yeah. It's going to hurt. Unless yeah. the reason he fell was that he became unconscious. Oh, I hadn't right? thought about he that. He lost consciousness prior and fell backwards because his body just went limp. I, okay, uh-huh, no, that's that's, that's a yeah. that's a great idea because I was just presuming that he was stone cold sober and sitting up and for some reason lost his balance. But if he's oh wow, no, that I hadn't. I cracked okay. the case, you guys. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I yeah. cracked it wide open. Yeah, I'm, I'm suddenly right. interested. Uh, follow us on uh, follow us on Facebook. I'm <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, all right, so let's continue with the story here. So uh, after he after he recovered his senses, he woke up. He left the pub, apparently didn't drink his beer, uh, and drove away in his Volkswagen, and he showed up a few hours later in his childhood neighborhood, which is called um, Scott uh, Heigerzielbach, I think, Heigerzielbach. And um, do we know, like, where that was in relation to this bar that he was at, like, if it was hours away, or if he just disappeared for hours and it was... Uh, About 15 minutes. Oh, so he was gone for a while. He was gone for a couple he hours. He was, like, missing yeah. for a couple hours. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe he went to other bars and fell off his bar. <laughs> <too>. <laughs> I don't okay, know. yeah. Yeah, and it might have been, too. I mean, so he shows up uh, in, in, in this, in, at this woman's house in his childhood neighborhood, uh, as I said, uh, the unpronounceable name. And uh, he went to this house of this woman that he'd known from his childhood, who by this time was a fairly elderly person. But you don't know. I mean, she might have been the only one that came forward. Maybe he spent that whole two hours knocking on doors and yeah. out of houses in the neighborhood. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's yeah. a weird, unaccounted time. Yeah, but it's a couple of hours that he disappears. Yeah, huh? and if he's just clocked his head. Yeah, who knows? For all we know, he could have just been driving around lost. And if, I'm sorry, yeah. I should have asked this question earlier too. Do we know how old he was? You know. Um, I, I found no record of exactly how old he was. I had the impression that he was, like, in his mid-30s. Okay, yeah, but, I was just, um, you know, again, is it like, a 70-year-old guy passes out versus, like, a middle-aged dude passes out. Mm. It's just a difference in my brain. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry. don't be sorry. Ask all those questions. I'm gonna. Yeah, so anyway, we don't know what happened uh, or what he was doing. He might have gone to other pubs and um, hung out. I mean, got, maybe he went and saw a movie. But he goes to see this woman. But he shows up at 1 a.m. at this, this old lady's doorstep. Uh, he'd known her since he was a kid and uh, wanted to talk to her, but she wouldn't let him in because of the late hour. And so she Makes basically sense. convinced him to go home to his wife. Mm-hmm. She probably thought he was drunk at 1 o'clock in the yeah. morning, yeah. randomly showing up at well, the house. Well, it is a little random. It's, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make you feel a little, you know. A little weird. A little well, edgy. Yeah, it's yeah. A, little, a little weird, creepy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, before he left, he, he said that he told her that a horrible incident was going to happen, was going to take place sometime soon. Oh. Didn't say what. Ominous. I know. A couple hours go by, a couple more missing hours. We don't know where the hell he was. He shows up. This time he's about 100 kilometers from his last location. Um, two truck drivers were driving down the Autobahn. They discover a Volkswagen Golf crashed in the ditch uh, next to the Autobahn. And both of them testified to having seen a person in a lightly colored jacket walking near the car. Independently of each other, right? Yeah. On their own. They yeah. were questioned together? Um, this I don't know. All I heard is they were tes- that they testified. Oh, I thought I read that it was independent accounts. Both of them 
were, said, yeah, no, I saw somebody in a light colored jacket. And the other person said, oh, yeah, no, I saw somebody in a, a oh. light person in a colored jacket. Oh, okay. No, that no, was no. a coherent sentence. Yeah, that, that was totally <laughs> coherent. No, um, yeah, you might be right. I don't, I don't remember that. But, you know, I, I, you know, when we're researching these things, we wind up reading a whole lot of stuff. Yeah, and that's sometimes true. A, yeah, I thought it was independently stuff. of each other, which is, of, of course, lends more that's, credence. Yeah, well, it definitely does. Yeah, so anyway, they see this person in a, in a lightly colored jacket. They they run to the nearest, uh, they have, you know, those emergency phones. By on the, the autobahn, highway. On the highway, whatever. In the 80s. Yeah, in the 80s, Before obviously. I was born. Yeah, obviously, they're not too necessary now, but they run to that. They call law enforcement, and then they go to the car, and there they find Gunther Stoll naked in the passenger seat of his car. Oh. Yeah, he was barely conscious. He said that there had been four guys in, with him in the car, and those guys had quote, beat him loose, unquote. I'm not Wait, sure what, is, what that means. I, I, guess I believe that probably means they beat the holy <laughs> out of him. Yeah, sounds like. That's that's the only way I can interpret that phrase. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. And so another, other, but I've, I've read other accounts, too, that say that he didn't say that. He just said that there were four guys, and then they had all taken off. You know, there's two, there's two versions of that. Uh, oh, different. beat him loose as him, shook him loose and left him behind? Yeah, they just take That him, could yeah, be another so interpretation be, of beat him loose is, yeah. you know, they shook him loose and, and yeah. ran away without him? Could be, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm just trying to trying to understand what this phrase could mean. I guess it, it could also just be, like, weird translation, right? It could be weird translation. I mean, you know, right, German yeah. to English is kind of a weird... And that, that was my... I, I just got to say this. I know this is a little late in the episode to say this, but that was probably the hardest part about reading this or researching this is that the majority of the articles in, are in German, and uh-huh. so when you're reading them translated, they don't come through exceptionally well, well every time. Nah. So it makes it, you, you question what you're reading, not for the validity of it, but for the correct word usage in it. Oh, yeah. yeah well, no. and it's just hard. I mean, you know, English is kind of a complicated language. Mm-hmm. Some of us know. So, you know, uh, people who are not native speakers or translation software often use words in a kind of weird way that we wouldn't recognize. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's every, totally... Every, yeah, every language has a lot of euphemisms. Mm-hmm. And, we, and we use them all the time without even realizing that, that literally what we're saying doesn't make sense. Literally, we I use mean, them say, literally all the time. I mean, like, beat the bush, you know? I'm going yeah. to go beat the bush looking for my cat, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like, what the hell does that mean? You know? It's like... <laughs> <laughs> what did the bush do to your cat? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so beat him loose could mean... Uh, There's a number of ways that could go. Yeah. Just yeah. from this, the way it's written. Yeah. Let alone what it could have actually been. Yeah. Yeah, and of course, you know, again, this is like, you know, been all over the internet, been told, retold, cut and pasted, and distorted, and so who knows. But there were four guys. Uh, the drivers asked Gunther if those men were his were friends, and he said no. And the ambulance showed up, carted him away, but he died in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. Mm. Yeah. So, so course, he was pretty severely injured. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he yeah. was. And, and it turns out, guess how he got injured? He got a run, beating. He got run over by a car. Wait, what? Yeah, he was run over by a car. He wasn't in a car accident. He yeah. was run over by a car? Yeah, he was run over by a car. So the police, uh, they investigated, and the forensic examination of his body showed that he had been run over by a car or a truck or something. He, but he'd been actually run over or hit by a car. Ow. And he was injured. They concluded he'd been injured before the crash. They hypothesized, because I don't know exactly how they could have known this for a certainty, but they hypothesized that he must have been run down in the passenger seat, and then somebody drove him to that location. I guess you could you could know by the what his injuries were. I mean, you know, yeah. there are injuries you get by being in the passenger seat of a car when it mm. is in a crash. Mm. With versus, without a seatbelt, certain things are gonna happen. Yeah, versus like getting hit by a car. There are other injuries, and oh, yeah. then you know the you know other things like if you can you can tell if somebody's got a broken bone and they've been moved mm. since that you know if that bone broke that way and that's fine or that broke that way and then they've moved that person a bunch of times in mm. the way that blood settle things like that there's lots of things so i you know i i believe them that they you know that he got hit and was then put in and the then put car. in the car he, he got hit he got but run over and then put in the car that's yeah. weird and then the car was crashed in a ditch right yeah the car was crashed in the ditch okay next to the autobahn so yeah that's that's kind of mysterious and and there was a part that i mentioned that he was naked when they found him oh yeah what yeah 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 this this is the odd bit yeah and yeah just, 
Okay. So he was naked. They concluded that he was naked when he got run over by the car. Oh. Yeah. So he wasn't stripped naked afterwards for, like, evidence reasons. Yeah. He was naked before. He was enjoying the yeah. night air. Yeah, he was going on a little frolic, apparently. And it was, it was October? Yeah. In yeah, Germany? late October. Late <laughs> yeah. October. I know, I know. Okay. Yeah. Um. So, well, you know, it, it's kind of weird, but uh, maybe he liked driving around naked. Who knows? There are folks that do that. Yeah. Yes, that's probably true. Yeah, so uh, as far as the police investigation went, they 